Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here's the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And this morning, I have, uh, I, I wouldn't say I had a briber because um, we're doing each other a favor, which we'll talk about, but I'm really stoked to have the world's most trusted authority on tax lien investing, the tax lien lady, Joanne Musa. Are you cold, Joanne? In New Jersey? <laughs> Hey, How Mark. You? Thank you for that introduction. I No, I'm inside. I'm not cold. We have a wood stove here. Mark's teasing me because he lives in Arizona and I am in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania and we're having snow today. Oh, we're having in New Jersey. You're in Poconos. Okay. I am close to New Jersey. Yeah. I am close to New Jersey. Okay. But I'm in the Pocono Mountains. So we're doing the, we're going to the Tax Lien Investing Conference uh, this weekend. And um, yeah. and I and, and and Joanne's really dragging me there, kicking and screaming. <laughs> he doesn't want to leave Arizona. I folks. don't want to leave. Like it's beautiful here. I I I took the family out last night to PF Chang's and we're sitting outside and it was like literally being on vacation. I mean it was amazing, and uh, and so now I've got to go to what, what's the weather going to be like three. Um, I'm no, that's a little bit South of me. It might be, it, it is supposed to be in the single digits where I am, but it'll probably be in the double digits down, um, in McCungie. Uh, okay. it is a ski resort area. So if you ski, you know, that's something you can do there, but coming from Arizona, you probably don't, don't ski. I, um, no, I, of course I ski, Joanne. I'm worldly. But oh, I'm not going okay. to have go. time. I'm not going to have time well, to ski because I'm going to go to the conference and then get the hell out of there as fast as I can. Well, I'm kind of a chicken when it comes to skiing. I love to ski, but I cross country ski. I'm afraid of downhill skiing. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a weightlifter, and I'm afraid of injuring myself so that so that I can't train. So, um, so I stick to cross country. That's that's cool. So. Um, how are you feeling by the way? Like it's, it's winter and you're a weightlifter. Like, do you ever get sick? Uh, not often, you know, I wouldn't say never, but not, not often. Um, do you take vitamins I, or something? I do. I take vitamins. Uh, I try to eat right. I'm not always good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably better than the average American at eating right. And, um, we eat a lot of organic food. We I try to stay away from certain things like wheat and dairy, not completely, but uh, I minimize them in my diet. Um, I I do like my sugar from time to time and my coffee. Uh, I don't drink other soft drinks though. Um, drink alcohol in moderation, uh, and. So, That's so, you, so my diet. yeah, so you eat clean, you drink clean, you're healthy. That's great. Yeah, I wouldn't say like not real clean, but probably better than the average American diet, I'm sure. Right, right. I, uh, I'll tell you a quick story before we, we get into like the investing part of it. So, about three weeks ago, I, I had like a cold and I broke out. It wasn't hives, but like I'm like real itchy, like this terrible rash, right? And so I'm taking like Zyrtec and Benadryl at night and I'm still real itchy. And my wife's like, you know, I heard of, a, of this lady. She's an acupuncturist, Jing Lu. She's like, go to Jing Lu and, uh, and see if she can help you before you go to like an allergist or dermatologist. So I go, so I make an appointment and I go to Jing Lu and she looks at me and she's like, oh, okay. She's like, this is what you do. And she gives me like these Chinese herbs. And, uh, and then she's like, okay, Mark. No dairy and no mm. sugar for a yeah. week. And I'm like, really? I'm like, and I have like all these cupcakes. Like I, I can't stop <laughs> eating cupcakes. I'm like, can, can I just have cupcakes? She's like, you do whatever you want. You just come back, pay more money. I'm like, 
<laughs> like, okay, I won't do it. So I, I've been very good. I think this is I like on day five now, but um, I've been pretty uh, crabby at night because I usually like eat dark chocolate at night, and you know I try to have like a little sweet, you know, here yeah. and there, and and of course those cupcakes. But so it's been pretty miserable. I yeah, the wheat I, yeah. and the dairy is really not good for you, you know, along with the sugar. And I have a tip, you know, you, you asked me earlier about a, a tip for everybody. Well, if you, uh, uh, for, to prevent the flu without getting a flu shot, because I, that's something I really don't do. I don't get shots. Um, but I do use homeopathic remedies and there is something now I'm not pronouncing this right, but, um, it's close enough. It's called a silicon, and you could get it at CVS. It's by a French company uh, by the name of Boiron. Uh, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it is a flu remedy. You can take it as a preventative or if you get signs of the flu and it will help you get over it faster. So it's, um, they also have a cold remedy too. Uh, cool. So, Very yeah. Very cool. All right, great. So, Let's talk about you and uh, you getting involved. So, so Joan, uh, Joanne is a uh, professional tax lien investor and teaches tax lien investing. But um, she's she was intrigued with the Investors Toolkit and actually got started with it, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, but you're not too far into it. Like you're just real. You're in real newbie stage. Yep, just right got now. my first property. Haven't I'm at the point now for that I'm doing the advertising. I haven't actually put the advertisement out there yet. Ready to do that now. Right, right. So, do you? I mean, you're busy, right? Yes. Um, but you're not beating yourself up at night, like you're not one of these people. Like I didn't get enough done during the day. Are you? I used to be, but I've learned to just shut my computer off. Or actually, I don't shut it off because. Um, I actually watch TV on my computer, but uh -huh. I stop working now at a certain time and make time for myself and for my family. So what I did yesterday, um, actually, I took some time off for myself in, in the middle of the afternoon, which I normally don't do. But because we have the conference coming up this Saturday, I went and got my hair cut and spent some time at the mall, which I normally don't do. But um but then when I came home, uh, yeah, I was tempted to go back to work, <laughs> but I didn't. I I took some time for myself and got a little workout in, just a little short workout, and then spent time with my husband and my family and watched um, some shows. Now, I don't watch TV. We actually don't have cable, but we do have um, – Netflix on our computer and we also there are certain shows that my husband likes to watch so I'll watch them with him on the computer after they've already aired <laughs> because uh, uh, television is somewhat of a waste of time <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> for a lot of people so but I, I like to spend um, a couple hours at the end of the day with him and sometimes we'll we'll watch TV shows or watch a movie that's fantastic okay so I think that's really really important and I think it's important from a business aspect, like I was just reading uh, this article on on productivity and creativity, and like we have like a creativity crisis in this country, and the reason is is that somehow we've all gotten this message that if you're not working or being doing something productive, you're not squeezing every minute out of every day, that somehow you're being lazy, and if you don't make room for play and relaxation. We, the the creative side of you doesn't get activated. Like we need that. And so it's very interesting that you chose to do that before you started doing your marketing for your property in Texas. And I think it's great because now um, you're going to be more relaxed, you're going to be more energized, and you're going to be able to sit down and be more creative with your marketing than you otherwise would be if you went into it kind of stressed and overworked and uh, and just, you know, squeezing every minute of the day. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's great. Like, I, I really think that's a, a good thing to think about when you're taking a walk or you're, you know, maybe uh, you're working out for an hour and you feel like, you know, 
some like I do this myself. Like I'll be doing something, and I'm thinking I should really be doing this, right? This this isn't being productive when I'm, you know, uh, I don't know. Well, doing, there's... doing whatever that's not productive. But now I'm I'm kind of like okay, this is being productive because I'm being good to myself, and ultimately, this is going to be helping me be more creative. I, there are other things to life than work and business. And, it, you know, one of the important things is your health, because if you don't have that, it's really hard to be effectively, uh, to work effectively, not only health, but energy. You need a, this supply of energy. And so if you don't treat yourself right and do the self care, um, you don't have the energy to do what you need to do in your business. Uh, or in your fam, your family, or your ho- hobby. My hobby is weightlifting. I'm a weightlifter, and I spent this whole weekend <laughs> teaching a course, helping teach a course. In um, it was a coaching course for USA Weightlifting. My coach is the high performance director for USA Weightlifting. Wow. And so I was assisting him teaching a weightlifting course. And next weekend, the day after my conference. Uh, I leave where our conference is in um, Mukunji, PA, which is an hour south of where I live. So it's a little warmer down there, Mark, than it is up here. <laughs> oh, good, good. So by, by the way, um, at, at the conference, we're not going to be talking about tax lien investing or tax deed investing. I want you to help me with my bench press. Is that okay? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't bench press. No, Olympic style weightlifting is what I do, and that is the snatch and the clean and jerk. Oh my gosh! Okay, I and won't be asking for that's that's like these CrossFit guys do that stuff. Well, not exactly. They no? do it like for reps, and um, it, it it's really not the way to do it because. Uh, I mean, they, they do a pretty decent job, some of them, but it's the type of lift where you need a lot of speed technique and your technique breaks down when you do it for reps with a heavy weight. So it's kind of tough to do that way. What we do is we, in our competitions, we have three attempts at the snatch, three attempts at the clean and jerk, and then we add them together for a total and you win or place based on your total in the two lifts. Now that same weekend, Actually, Saturday, my son was also in a competition that that same day, but um, I'm his main coach, and my coach is also one of his coaches, and uh, he's actually brought him up in the sport since he was 10 years old. Now he's 21, and he had taken a couple of years off. He's just come back this past year, this past May, and so he's getting back to that – he's a he's a top level national he was a national champion a junior national champion and uh and so he was at a competition and neither one of us could be with him helping him through the competition because we were doing this uh coaching course so we had another coach another uh very very good coach who's a national level coach coach him and he did very good he made all his lifts and got personal records he snatched uh, 125 kilos. Now, a wow. kilo is 2.2 pounds. So that's 165 pounds that he snatched, and he clean and jerked um, 157 pounds. So, you know, that's over uh, over a 300-pound oh, um, my gosh. clean and jerk that he did. So, uh, yeah, so. He, um, he must be hard to shop for clothes. Like, <laughs> no, actually, if you saw him, you you wouldn't know by looking at him that he was a weightlifter. Um, we have weightlifters of all different shapes and sizes. Most of them look very or very athletic looking, but uh, because of the of the way we lift um, and the way we use our bodies, it it really doesn't. It's the lift kind of doesn't always dictate what you look like. We have lifters that are very small because we have different weightlifting categories, and we have lifters that are huge. And, uh, and I mean, if you watch it on the Olympics and now we have women's weightlifting in the Olympics, um, we have for the last couple of Olympics had a a women's weightlifting. Actually, I think, um, yeah, I mean, I I really don't, I don't watch the Olympics, but I'll take your word for it. Uh, but you'll see, um, they're very athletic looking there. There really are all different shapes and sizes, Uh uh, but they don't look like a bodybuilder or a power lifter. 
um, because it's more technique and skill and speed. So there, and, so course, it's, it's more athletics than it is. Yeah, just, it is very athletic. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So how does that translate? <clears throat> excuse me into uh, tax lien and tax deed investing. So you've got discipline, right? Right. Um, what else? Uh, dedication, discipline. Earlier, before we started this uh, podcast, you and I were talking about mindset. Right. And it, it um, really gives you a success mindset. It gives you self-confidence. Uh, it, is the one, which is why I love coaching weightlifting. I love coaching young kids because it gives them self confidence. Right, right. Um, yeah, let me let me ask you, and I asked uh, some other people this as well. How do you get over the fear of of going into the unknown? Like, you know, you just went into tax deed investing and, and the investors toolkit program. Like, like right away. Um, I have so many people that it just seems like they're just they want to do it, but then. You know, I can just sense the fear. Like they're afraid they're going to lose money. They're going to, they're not going to do it. I mean, you know, this, the, the usual kind of usual suspects of excuses of, of why they can't do something. Do you, and I'm sure as a, as a tax lien investing coach, you see this a lot. How do you handle it? Uh, well, fear is a good thing, <laughs> but you have to just, um, go through the fear. And in, in some ways, my work in, in tax lien investing and training other investors is a lot like coaching weightlifting because they're both things that are dominated by men. Right. And, and here I was a woman, you know, uh, breaking my way into it. I was the first woman coach of a men's international weightlifting team. The first, the first, uh, youth men's team to go to um, the first youth world championships in Chiang Mai, Thailand in 2009. And, oh, wow. and yeah, I was a little, uh, there was a little fear there. And I always like to do things that I'm a little bit afraid of because that's how you grow <laughs> by doing those things. <laughs> right. You know? Right. Um, and, you know, you think about, uh, soldiers in wartime and uh are are they afraid yes they're they should be <laughs> oh yeah of course but, right right but they they go ahead and and do their job anyway you know and and so that's that's what it's about it's um and the other component to that too is you have to have faith faith in yourself and faith in something bigger than you you know right um, right yeah, so that that kind of helps you get through it. I, you know, yeah. For for me, what I th- I like to think of when I'm really kind of scared or um, anxious about something and kind of get lost in my head, I I kind of just think, you know, we're all just on this planet spinning, and we're not and we're in not for a very long time, by the way. Mm, yeah, and, and it's quite a gift that we we're, we're able to do this in this vast universe. And then I'm kind of like, you know, it just kind of gives like this perspective, like really, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about this little deal I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's just money. They're going to print more of it tomorrow. So it's, it's not the end of the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. So mm-hmm. it kind of helps me get, get more perspective on, on this. And, and, and the truth is like, I, if I know I'm doing the deal right and I'm buying it right and I've done my due diligence, it's just for me that last bit of faith, especially when I first started, I mean, I was very, very scared. I'm very risk averse. Um, and, and, you know, especially when I didn't really know what I was doing it was just, you know, I, I had a buddy I was working with that was doing this and, uh, I'm like, well, if he can do it, I can do it. Right. So, Mm -hmm. but, now it's just like I still get a little nervous when I do a big deal. What do you feel that way? Or you just I like, think that's a I'm good sign. It right. I, it, you know, it, it, I think that's a good sign. It's like a performer when they perform, they always get those butterflies. It's just a way to it, you have to have a way to use that and make it work for you. And it's like when I compete in weightlifting or. Um, even when I coach, I get that feeling, <laughs> especially right, right. coaching my son in a national championship or 
something like that. And, and you need to use that. Of course, I don't show it. You can't show that on the outside. Everybody has to see you as being calm, cool, and confident. And, um, you know, especially the athlete that you're coaching, you have to show utmost confidence in the athlete that you're coaching so that they have confidence in themselves. But you're, you've already done the work. You've already, this person has done the work they've trained you, you, you've, you know, you've picked the right, um, warm up sequence for them. You've picked the right weights. You know, they can do it. Uh, and you know, if, if I'm the athlete, because I'm I, not only do I coach, I'm also an athlete and now I'm competing. I know I did the work. I know I can do it. So you have that confidence. Yeah. There's a, the, a little bit of that, but you always think of the outcome that you want to have, not what you don't want to have. It, it's just like coaching an athlete. You don't tell them what you don't want them to do. You tell right. them what you want them to do. Right. Right. Um, so do you use like visual visualization techniques? Do yes. You, you do. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's interesting. So at what point do you do it? So should we visualize you closing that deal in, uh, in Texas or, or do you do it for just weightlifting or business or what do you do it for? I, I should, well, I have done it for my business. Like for instance, for the conference, I would visualize having a lot of people come to the conference, having them really be happy with, um, you know, with what they're learning and, and, and have, um, you know, the speakers, uh, have them happy with the speakers and have the speakers, uh, happy with, um, you know, every, everybody doing a good job and being happy about the job that they're doing. And with, if I'm visualizing as an athlete, I would be visualizing doing my lifts just perfectly or visualize being on the podium and, and, um, winning. Um, so whatever it is, you can visualize the outcome that you want to have. Right. Right. So that, that helps. That's a, that's, that's a great tip. Well, well, for, with a deal, for instance, you can visualize somebody being happy about the property that they just bought. You can, there's a lot of different ways to do it. You can visualize, um, uh, closing on, on a property and you can actually vis visualize the check, how much money you want to get for that property. You can actually see the check written to you in the amount or, or your business in the amount that you want for the property. Uh, so there are a lot of different ways you can actually vis visualize the outcome that you want. I like that. I like that. Now, as far as goal setting is concerned, do you do that? Do you, um, like the beginning of the year or how, how do you, how do you do your goal setting? I do. I'm not as disciplined as I should be in that. Like this year, I didn't actually sit down and write out my goals for the year. Um, I didn't, I keep telling myself, I'm going to do that. I didn't do it. <laughs> didn't do that. Um, I do write out, uh, the projects that I have. Um, I did write out my goal, for instance, you know, the financial goals that I want for my business. Um, I have a particular, you know, challenge that I'm doing with, with a business coach that I have Right. where I had to write out, you know, what I did last year and what my challenge is to do, um, in the next three months or six months. Um, but I haven't really written out my goals. I, I thought about, I usually do though. I must say we usually, and actually we've even done that as a family. Um, and I think the reason I didn't do that yet is because I have some personal stuff going on. My son and my husband are being operated on, two weeks right after, uh, actually a few days after the conference, my son gets, um, a knee operation. And then the week following that, my husband gets a shoulder operation. Oh, so my there's a lot of, um, personal stuff going on, but, uh, but normally what we do is sit down with each of our kids and find out what their goals are and, and then talk together about what we want to do. And, and, uh, and said Argo. So we're still in the process of doing it that now <laughs> because, because of these other things that were kind of up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look, life gets in the way. So, you know, it's important that you, you set aside time and, and get to it. But if you don't get to it, like be good to yourself, right? Like you will get to it. 
Yeah. So, yeah, you don't yeah, stress see, about it. Yeah. And, and, and we just actually had breakfast with one of our sons. What we plan to do this year is spend time with each of them. And and they are young adults, by the way. They're not kids. Uh, but when they were kids, we used to have them write down every year what their goals were. Now, some years we might have forgot because, maybe you know, uh, maybe some of them were away. One might have been away at school. Um, I had one son who went away to high school. Uh, he wanted to go to military college in Texas, and we lived in New Jersey at the time. Um, so, but uh, uh, but now we decided that we're going to actually sit down with them and and talk about their goals now that they're older. Uh, the youngest one is 19, and we just took him to breakfast this morning, and and he's the one who's being operated on, by the way, and um, and talk to him about his goals. We we didn't actually have him write it down, but right. he did write it down because his goal. He just started a new job as a salesman selling um, Cutco knives. Oh, so cool. his company had him write down his goals. So we we didn't actually make him write them down again for us, but right. we just asked them about them. So plus he's going to school and he's getting and he's having knee surgeries. And, <laughs> yeah, he, he's got a full plate. Yeah, he does. Yeah, as do you. I mean, you know, we always feel you know, sympathy for the people that are going through these surgeries, but it's really hard on the person, on the caretaker. Yeah. And they, they don't get any sympathy. Like, oh, you know, you're not in any pain. <laughs> but it's, you know, you can argue like the caretaker's got it, it got it even tougher. Yes, you're right. And this is his second knee surgery. So I've been through this before. Yeah, it is tough. And his surgeon is in Manhattan, which is two hours away. Um, so, you know, he's going to have to go back and forth uh, he gets his rehab closer to home, but when he has to go visit the surgeon for checkups, we've got to take him back to Manhattan. So, all right, cool. So I'm not going to haze you if you don't get that property sold in 60 days. <laughs> so I'm going to be I'm going to be real easy on you. And uh, but keep after me so that I actually do what I need to do because I have other things. You know. I have yeah. Well, I mean, my my big thing is that you need to have your your assistant, your virtual assistant really help you with it and you just need to create the system and kind of push on it. I'm real, I'm, you know, I'm a real big believer on working on the business and not in the business. So, yeah. um, that, that's my, my mantra, if you will. So, uh, you'll get to it and, you know, and sometimes it's, it's hard just to find time to create the system and push it out. Like I struggle with it myself. Um, and so it's, you know, look, you can, you just do your best for that day, and then you call it a day, right? Right. So as long as you're doing your best, you can go to bed knowing, hey, I did my best, and uh, now I'm going to eat some sugar and cupcakes. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Don't no, don't do that, that, but once in a while, yeah. <laughs> do that first thing in the morning if you're going to do it, and then go exercise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or yeah, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to do something nice to myself, like a, a small little treat. I'm going to, you know, exercise or, you know, have a you know, go out for Starbucks. I don't know. Something yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, when you feel like having a cupcake, go exercise instead. Okay. And then, have a, and, and then have something else, you know, that's not quite as bad as a cupcake. <laughs> right, right. All right. So we're getting we're getting low on time. And I love doing this to you, Joanne. I love putting you on the spot. Nothing makes me happier. What is your tip of the week? Okay. Well, I already told you one tip. About yeah, that, was that. Like, that was like a health tip. I need a tax investing, lean investing tip or wealth building tip, something business-wise. A wealth building tip? Well, um, I'm hearing an echo, Mark. Are you hearing that echo? I don't hear it. It's not on okay. my end. Okay, good. Well, I, I have a couple of tips for you. Um, just to let everybody know if they're interested in the, the, uh, online tax sales, the Arizona, some of the biggest, um, online tax lien sales are coming up. The Arizona tax lien sales, you'll find them on realauction.com. But I did, I know this is a tip I gave before, but the only reason I'm giving it again is because these sales are going on now. Uh, so I guess I have to give another tip too, yeah. because I gave that one before and, I was just thinking of one and it, and it, and if you give me a, a moment, it'll, it'll just come, it'll come back to me. Okay. Um, you want me, you want me to do my tip? Yeah. Do your tip. Okay. So I just found a very cool uh, website called similar sites.com. 
SimilarSites.com, and you type in any site. So, for example, while Joanne, while Joanna was talking, I was listening, by the way, but I did type in uh, in SimilarSites.com, RealAuction.com, and wanted to see what similar sites came up. And there were 40 similar sites to RealAuction.com. Wow. So the first one that came up was GrantStreet.com. Yep, Grant Street. It had Group an 85 percent online platform. Yeah, yeah. So it had an 85 percent similarity score. So see, and the fact that Joanne saying, "Yeah, she knows it," validates this tip. Thank you, Joanne. Um, and then there's real auction. Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, real foreclose. Uh, dot com was a 48 percent similarity score. Bid for assets had a 44 percent similarity score. Um, Denver tax sale had a 16 percent similarity score, and so it kind of goes on from there, and you get like the long tail of these. Uh, of these sites. So similar sites.com I think is pretty cool and um, check it out. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Similar site or uh, sites? Sites with an S. S-I-T-E-S.com. Yeah. And okay. I'll, I'll put this in the, the show notes. So you don't have to write it down. If you're listening. Okay. I've got it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm drawing a blank now, Mark. You'll have to give me a minute to think of my tip. Does it have to be a website or you whatever you want? No pressure. That's not helping. <laughs> um what were we we were talking about uh, uh somebody's coming home that, so the oh, dog's barking the dog. to let us know that somebody's coming home um we were talking about mindset so uh i could oh i know what tip i can give everybody okay great if they want to find out more about the sport of weightlifting they can go to usaweightlifting.com USA. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's usaweightlifting.org. usaweightlifting.org. Weightlifting.org. Okay. Find out more about the sport of weightlifting. Very cool. Very cool. All right. And I'm going to give one more tip because I'm just feeling in that generous mood. Um, and I think it's, it's kind of just cool. If uh, you are doing a lot of writing, if you're blogging, or Joanne's going to be working on her uh, marketing piece, right? So it's called PolishMyWriting.com. Ooh. PolishMyWriting.com. Instantly check your writing for spelling or grammatical errors. So this is why I'm the land geek because I know all these cool tech sites. I, sp I spend a lot of time you know, researching. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, thank you. All right, so Joanne, are we good? Any other... Uh, Anything else going on? If, if By the way, we're going to probably air this Thursday, but if you're on the East Coast and you can come to the uh, the seminar on Saturday, that'd be great. We'd love to see you face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, just go to TaxLeanInvestingConference.com, correct? Yes, TaxLeanInvestingConference.com, and you have to register ahead of time. Right. Um, so yeah, if you, if you air this on Thursday, they still have, you know, a couple days to register. So, right. So if you're on the East coast, there's, there's no, excuses. actually they have one day to register. <laughs> you have one day, <laughs> so one day to register. Have to register by Friday. <laughs> right. We, if they come in the door though, are you going to turn them away? Um, actually Mark, we're almost full oh, and okay. we're, we're providing food. Oh. We're providing breakfast and lunch. So we have to give a count of how many people. So, you know, we can't have a whole bunch of people show up at the door. Okay. Don't show um, up at the door. Yeah. Don't yeah. show up the door. But if you register by uh, the day before, we'll get you in. Right. Right. And then um, Joanne, where should they go to learn more about you? Uh, TaxLeanLady.com. TaxLeanLady.com. Uh, give Joanne some love. Go on the site and uh, learn more about tax lien investing because – it's a great way to make, what, 12, 16, sometimes 24% on your money. Yeah, or passively. 36%. Or with, 36%. Um, so Illinois. it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great way 
to uh, to invest in real estate, diversify away from uh, what you know what I do, which is uh, buying and flipping raw land, which is a little bit more hands on. Tax lien investing is much more hands off. Wouldn't you say? Wouldn't you say? It's a little bit more. It, yeah, it's a more hands off. And there's also redeemable deed investing where you uh, you're likely to get the property. And in some states can even rent out the property. Um, in Texas, for example, uh, you can buy the property at the sale. The previous owner has the right to redeem, but you're still considered the owner of the property. You can go ahead and rent it out. Can't actually sell it because the previous owner has a few months to redeem it. In some cases, a couple of years if it's a homesteaded property. But, uh, but you can start getting cash flow, rent the property out in the meantime. Fantastic. Okay, great. So learn more about that. TaxLeanLady.com. And look, give me some love. Go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. I see the average investor making. And of course, get this podcast delivered each week into your email inbox. Joanne, thanks so much. I really oh, appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. I hope you'll come you're back. You're welcome. And one more time, the conference website, if anybody wants to uh, um, register at the last minute, uh, which is by, if this airs Thursday, by Friday, um, www.taxleaninvestingconference.com. Tax and you could see investing. Mark yeah. and me in person. That's right. So come, to, yeah. So register now, taxleaninvestingconference.com. And um, look, Leave us some feedback on iTunes. Uh, email me. Let me know what you'd like to hear about. And um, I know this was a little bit of a different podcast this week. It wasn't so much uh, how to, but uh, more mindset. And uh, for those of you who are um, secretly wishing that you could learn how to do the clean and jerk, now you can know. <laughs> so. No, that's not what we're going to be talking about at the conference. But that's not what we're going to be talking about at the conference. We're going to be yeah. talking about how to profit from tax liens and how to get the – we're going to talk about three things, education, information, and automation. So I'm going to give some education on how to do it. We're going to talk about where to get the information that you need. Uh, actually, we have um, – uh, somebody else is going to uh, talk about where to get the information and automation. We're going to show software that will automate the whole thing for you. I and then it. you're going to be there. And I'm going to be there. And I'm going to be talking about uh, what I do um, for an hour. Oh, I get to speak for like an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, I'm really excited about it because I've never done it actually. So um, I will be practicing a lot on the plane. Yeah. Don't tell everybody that. Why not? <laughs> you're going to. You're, you, you know what you've I, done your webinar. And, yeah, no, I and, have. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to go in like, hey, everybody. Uh, apo I apologize up front. <laughs> I've never done. No, this. you're yeah, going to do no. a great job. Yeah, I no. can't wait. I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm glad. I'm glad. I I, I won't let you down. I promise. It's going to be good. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. And uh, Joanne, thank you. And and we'll see everybody next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.